Hi guys, good day. I'm so excited to inform you that this is our last topic in the requirements modeling. Okay? And also just to give you uh, uh just to give you my my experience before aside from experiencing it or aside from uh, I had an ex intensive training with the this topic or the flow models way back in my college years. I also had an experience in a software um, software development company where we use these tools in the flow models later on that I will discuss okay aside from those tools in the flow models uh, we also had an experience creating the scenario based tools like the um, like the uh, use case diagram we also have the formal use case and the activity diagram okay so for today, uh, we will discuss the last model in the requirements modeling that can be used as alternative to class diagrams or object-oriented tools in general, which is the flow models. So what is flow models or what is um, flow-oriented models? Flow-oriented models um, represent the system as an information transform depicting how data are transformed as they flow through various system functions. This type of modeling is a stark contrast to the object-oriented paradigm that we have been doing in the previous lessons using the OOP models, of course. Take note, guys, that the um, analysis of the system or software, it is based on how the data is being used, um, the data is being transformed, manipulated or passed on as the data is used as input to various system functions so uh, here in the flow oriented models we will focus on the data itself okay and there are two models that we're gonna uh, there are two models that we can use for um, flow modeling we have the data flow diagram here and we also have the entity relationship diagram I know that you had a good experience or a um, good application about the entity relationship diagram before uh, I know that it was discussed um, in your previous um, database course last year and right now in this topic or in this discussion we will focus on the data flow diagram Okay, so that we can understand um, how to create a data flow diagram, we need as well to know um, those notations or those symbols that we're going to use. Okay, so when we say a data flow diagram, data flow bi diagram, by the way, guys, just to add up uh, of what I discussed in the previous slide, um, it is a way of representing a flow of data through a process or a system usually an information type of system okay so we have four um, notations that we're gonna discuss for this slide so we have one moment first notation or symbol we have the process okay so the process um, actually it takes it takes in a data and manipulates data according to a prescribed operation or data manipulation and it should be labeled by numbers like one you will see later on how will I use numbers here and basically inside here um, you will see verb phrases okay just like what you had experienced in our previous diagrams that I let you insert a verb phrases only okay take note again when you say process it is actually the work or the action performed on the data so basically it is the process itself okay next notation we have the source and or the sink so if we will talk about the source or the sink um, this can be an external entity that can be the source or recipient of information okay a good example for this one I know that you talk about entity uh, before in your um, database course but again if we will connect this one in our flow model um, 
our entity here, a good example for this one is first, um, uh, your um, potential pet owners. Those are the end users of your system. Aside from that, customers, right? Um, pet owners, right? Um, how about those students who are going to use your system? So those are the um, external entities or those are um, the actors um, who will use your system. Okay, next notation, we have the data flow. Okay, okay. when you say data flow, it actually shows the flow of data from the entity to process, process to process, process to entity or process to data storage and the data store. The data flow is actually unidirectional. Okay, take note that the data flow is actually a unidirectional. And of course, in the data flow, you will see here the process, uh, you will see here the event for example, you will see here a phrase, um, the event that will trigger to the next um, to the next process or to the next notation. You will see that kind of example later on. Okay. Lastly, we have the data storage or the data store. This serves as the repository of data and data store inside the system. And this is where you're going to use your database part of the system. Um, for example, um, your database table or the table in your database here, it's student info or student table or TBL underscore TBL. You will put your database table here. And of course, you need, uh, you need as well to label it. It really depends on you. Okay. I will show you a lot of examples later on. So let's proceed to our next slide. By the way, um, you might mistake uh, a DFD as a flowchart, but it is not. It is, it is really wrong. Okay, a data flow diagram has no control flow. Okay, take note on that one. A data flow diagram has no control flow. There are no decision rules and no. Um, uh, there is no decision rules and no loops because specific operations made on the data can be represented by a flowchart. Okay, a DFD is a structured analysis modeling tool. It corresponds to the um, it corresponds to the activity diagram um, in um, in the object oriented analysis that you created before. Okay, so. DFD, it's different from flowchart. Okay? So let's proceed. So right now, we need to discuss about the certain rules that we need to follow in creating, a data, uh, in creating this type of diagram. Okay? First one, processes must have both outputs and inputs. Meaning, it cannot be that a process will have inputs only or outputs only okay that's why I X this one because it's a no-no because um, it only um, uh, the process it only um, extract outputs this one the process entertains and inputs so it's a no-no so there should be an input and outputs for example it can also be there should be a inputs then one output okay so in our process example um, inside the process again you need to take note that there should be a verb phrase okay it should start with a verb and label it with a number okay you need to label this one um, with a number for example one then for example here it's add oh sorry oh god okay let's I'm not using my pad that's why okay add student forgive me okay add student 
for example and this is your um, number this is number one for example okay next rule so another rule is that all flows um, all flows or all data flows to or from the data store must have or must um, data store must move through a process first okay what do I mean um, if you will gonna use a data store there should be a um, there should be a process in between that's why I put this one as X because this is a no no this is a data store then you will transfer um, your data from this data store to this one okay it's a no no because there should be a process in between so if you will gonna um, um, if you were gonna use a data store here there should be a process then it will be moved to another data store take note if you will see something like this the meaning of this one it's retrieve it means that you are getting a data from your data store okay if you will see something like this um, sorry uh, one moment if you will see something like this the meaning of this one it's you're actually updating it so from a certain entity then it goes through a process after the process being completed it will update or save your data in the data store okay so again we have retrieve here and we also have the update or save okay the data flow cannot occur to and from a data store directly from an entity or another data store just like what I explained earlier this is an entity this one it shouldn't be um, the entity it shouldn't be um, it um, it shouldn't be um, directed to the data store and also the same way it shouldn't be that the data store it will be um, it will there will be a pass-through of data from the data store going to the entity it's a no-no because there should be a process in between okay don't forget about that again this is a uh, retrieve okay and this is update when you say update we are inserting it we are uh, modifying it or we are saving it okay so let's proceed right now we also have another rule that we uh, we need to follow um, no data moves directly between external entities without going through a process this is a no-no take note entity going to an entity it's a no-no there should be a process in between okay entity going through a process then process going to another entity okay interaction between external entities without intervening um, processes or outside the system and therefore it shouldn't be represented here in our D, uh, DFT okay source and sync labels should be a noun phrases again I know that I only inserted this one it's not related here uh, oh, sorry because this is an entity di sorry this is an entity this is our source this is our sink so this should be um, a noun phrase in the process it's a verb phrase and here in our um, entity or in our source and sink it should be a noun phrase take note on that one guys let's proceed so each data flow should be uh, should have one direction only another rule you need to use one you need directional flow so this is a no-no because actually it did not use a unidirectional flow uh, this is correct okay a bidirectional flow it's a no-no so it should be like this one 
Okay, and the example in the left, if you will see it here, the arrow either fork or is bidirectional, this is not allowed. Okay, instead, we should use two different arrows instead of a bidirectional flow. So we can use something like this. Okay, the use of forked data flow should only be made for a same data flow only. So if we can see this one, um, if you will see this, um, it has, um, it contains different, um, it contains a different um, data flow, right? So it should be the same so that you, we, so that um, you can use a, um, so that you can use a, a fork data flow. But I believe that, um, uh, Minsan nanto siya ginagamit. I think it's really better if you will use a unidirectional flow. Okay? Let's proceed. Okay. Last rule. Just like the forked data flow earlier, the same rule implies in joining the data flow. Okay? Joining must be done on the same data item only. So again, um, it, this is a no-no because, again, joining must be done on the same data item only. If this is actually the same, you can actually use, um, you can actually use joining or you can actually use what we call merge. Okay? Also, a flow cannot be directly from a process to itself. So, I know that we had this type of, um, this type of, example in our um, previous diagram which is the sequence diagram that it will process by itself in data flow diagram um, it is it is actually a no-no okay if you really need to reprocess or to have a self process there should be another process that will that you need to use before it will go back to a like this one Okay?